Today, we'll be looking at the peculiar metabolic mechanisms of the fascinating world of bacteria, the so-called alternative sources of metabolism. Bacteria can be divided into a matrices of three metabolic divisions. An organism's energy source can either be chemically derived or photochemically derived. An organism's reducing equivalent can either be organic or inorganic. Finally, an organism's carbon source can either be from pre-existing biomolecules or fixed from CO2. Today, we will be looking at a unique bacteria that uses chemical energy, has an inorganic reducing equivalent, and synthesizes its biomolecules by fixing carbon from CO2. We call these bacteria hemolithoautotrophs. This bacteria is called Acidothiobacillus ferrooxidans. It is an extremophile bacteria which thrives in acidic environments, is gram-negative, and obtains its energy from the oxidation of inorganic iron 2 plus ions to iron 3 plus. Following the oxidation of iron, the electrons gained are passed through one of two competing pathways, the downhill pathway and the uphill pathway. The downhill pathway is aerobic ATP producing, while the uphill pathway is an anaerobic biosynthetic pathway. However, there is also evidence that A. ferrooxidans may also use iron 3 plus as a terminal acceptor for the downhill pathway under anaerobic conditions. Looking closer at the mechanism, we can see that the highly oxidizing rustocyanin cytochrome 2 protein that is embedded in the outer membrane strips iron 2 plus of an electron, which it passes to the rustocyanin complex in the periplasm. Rustocyanin then passes the electron to either the downhill pathway on the left or the uphill pathway on the right. Rustocyanin is a rather unique enzyme. A strong oxidizer, it contains copper that is embedded in a beta sandwich fold with a tetrahedron binding site. Before the start of the uphill and downhill pathways, let's quickly review the electron transport chain. Here, the NADH derived from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle is reduced through a series of steps, with oxygen as the final electron acceptor to ultimately produce water. The energy produced here can't be used directly. It has to be converted to ATP first. Let's look at our inner mitochondrial membrane where the flow of electrons across various intermediate carriers is used to pump protons into the periplasm via integral proton pumps. This ultimately creates a strong proton gradient. Protons are subsequently allowed to flow back through the inner mitochondrial membrane through ATPase, producing ATP. Electron transport in A ferrooxidans is similar, except of course we start with iron 2 plus as the electron donor. In the downhill pathway, Cytochrome C4 pulls an electron off rustocyanin. It subsequently transfers the electron here to cytochrome C1, which thereafter relinquishes it to cytochrome AA3. The complex transfers its electrons to molecular oxygen, producing water and, of course, driving the pumping of two protons into the periplasm. The protons then flow back across the membrane through ATPase, and ATP is produced. What happens if there's little environmental access to oxygen? or if the ATP-ADP ratio is too high, the cell switches to anaerobic metabolism. In the uphill pathway, the electrons are transferred to cytochrome A1, and thereafter to cytochrome BC1, which is a component of the coenzyme Q cytochrome C reductase complex. This complex reduces quinol to dihydroquinone. Dihydroquinone acts as an intermediate electron carrier and relinquishes the electron to NDH, which reduces NAD plus to make NADH. The NADH is later used in conjunction with ATP to drive the fixing of carbon from CO2 into new biosynthetic material. So, why do we care? Well, A. ferrooxidans is in reality a very important bacteria. We use it to make desulfurized coal and crude oil due to its ability to reduce sulfur as well as iron. It thus makes our fuels burn cleaner. However, as iron 2 is soluble while iron 3 is not, this bacteria can damage and clog water pipes. With an understanding of some of the processes that go on within this unique bacterium, we can both make this process more efficient where we want to, like cleaning up our energy sources, or adding in inhibitors to the process to prevent damage to our infrastructure.